Michael Jordan is one of the richest men on this planet. He is worth roughly 2.1 billion dollars. What he touches ultimately turns to gold. He made the NBA the global product it is today. He established Nike as the top shoe in the game, but for all the money he has made, he has lost a ton. For the public, do you have a gambling problem? No, I, I enjoy it. It's a hobby. If I had a problem, I'd be starving. I'd be hawking this watch. My championship rings, I would sell my house. I would do this. My wife would left me or she'd be starving. My kids would be starving. I do not have a problem. I, I enjoy gambling. Mike would beg to differ that he has a gambling problem. But let me share with you the whole story. The entire story of Jordan's different gambling stints. So you guys can decide if he had a gambling addiction or not. The stories of Michael Jordan and gambling are infamous. We all heard the absurd amounts of cash he would put up in wagers. Amounts us regular folks would take a lifetime to make. But his gambling days started far before his rise to fame. Gambling was in MJ's DNA. As early as high school, he would bet his friends and teammates for small things such as a bottle of coke, stamps, couple dollars, and he would make these bets on just about anything. You name it, Mike will make a bet on it. It stemmed from his extremely competitive side. Mike was competitive about everything, even if he sucked at the thing he was competing at. He would make drinking water a competition. Michael compete with anything though. Like, you know, if we're drinking water, you know, Mike, I'll, I'll race you. So as he was becoming a global icon, and more and more revenue was hitting his pockets. The stakes of his bets progressively got higher and higher. He was excessively gambling, and it was known in NBA circles he was quite the gambler. Many of us know this photo, Ron Harper, Scottie Pippen, and Michael Jordan playing cards on the aisles of a Chicago charter flight. Why this photo is famous is because it represented what the flight actually was, a casino on the air. This photo was taken at the back of the plane where the high rollers play, where serious cash is up for grabs. But that didn't stop Mike from going to the front of the plane to play blackjack, a dollar a hand with BJ Armstrong, John Paxson, and Will Perdue. When Paxson asked Jordan why even bother playing with us when barely any money is on the table, Jordan replied saying I want to say I got your money in my pocket. His competitiveness drove him to gamble compulsively on everything and anything. And when Jordan gambled, he was of the mindset, do anything to win. He routinely would cheat and try to get the upper hand on his competitors. Will Perdue highlights it best. MJ would always wager him on the Dunkin' Donut races. What Will Perdue didn't know at the time was, Mike already knew who had won because he would ask the security guards who seen the tapes during rehearsals to feed him answers. That wasn't even the worst story that came to light of how he used to cheat when he gambled. When he returned from the Olympics with the Dream Team, at the airport he made a bet with each one of his teammates that his bag would come out first out of the gates. His reasoning? Because he was the face of the team. So all his teammates took the bet. Probability was on their side. But sure and behold, Mike's bag came out first. What they didn't know was Mike bribed the baggage handler to make sure his bag came out first from the gate. And he only told them about that after he had pocketed all the money. But for as much as Jordan gambled, there are some harrowing tales to his adventures. Yes, he would routinely play for $100,000 a hole in golf, but we are talking about gambling stories that birth conspiracy theories. Theories such as his father was murdered by the mafia due to him not settling his gambling debts, and David Stern handing him a secret suspension for his excessive gambling. It is public knowledge, Michael Jordan gambled with some real shady characters. In 91, after winning the chip, Jordan and the Bulls were invited to the White House by then President George H.W. Bush. However, Jordan did not travel to DC 
and his absence was put down as a family vacation that had long been scheduled. Where he really was, was Carolina on a three day gambling spree with James Bueller, a known gambler and golf hustler. But the worst part was, he was also a convicted cocaine dealer and had two probation violations for carrying semi-automatic weapons. Michael Jordan was gambling with a convicted criminal and he racked up a $57,000 debt to him. Michael paid him, but the problem came when the $57,000 were seized by government officials because it was believed Bueller obtained the cash illegally. When enforcement raided Bueller's house on suspicions of money laundering, they found a check written to him from Jordan. When Jordan was asked of this, he initially claimed the check was a business loan for a golf driving range. But after Bueller was put on trial, Jordan was summoned to a federal court to testify about the checks. He revealed they were to cover gambling losses for a weekend of golf and that he previously lied to avoid scrutiny, embarrassment, and damage to his reputation. That wasn't the only shady character he gambled with. There was also Eddie Dow. Eddie had a minimal police record compared to Bueller. He was accused of punching one of his workers years ago, though not found guilty, and once mooned an officer. That wasn't the shady part. The shady part was, he was a Bales bondsman putting up money to free accused criminals. It was reported Eddie Dow would carry a stainless steel case filled with money and a revolver every day to work. How Jordan's name ties to this? Eddie Dow was murdered by a young thief and three other men at his home. They pried open his briefcase and took roughly about $20,000. What was left was papers and documents. When officials went through the case, it was found there was three checks in the case written to Dow totaling $108,000. Who gave him this? Michael Jordan. These checks were written to settle more gambling debts from him. Just a year later, another Michael Jordan gambling story broke the news. A man by the name of Richard Eskenaz, a self-proclaimed gambling addict, published a book called Michael and Me, Our Gambling Addiction. In this book, he claimed Michael owed him roughly $900,000 for a 10 day gambling spree on the golf course in 91. But had that amount reduced all the way to $300,000 because he was scared Jordan was never going to pay him after months of chasing him down with phone calls and letters and not receiving any money. Eskinas even showed the checks he had received from Jordan to prove he wasn't lying. Jordan this time took a different approach to the situation. He admitted to making wagers with Mr. Eskinaz on the golf course, but said that the wagers were substantially less than what was written on his book and that Eskinaz had written such a preposterous amount just for book sales. Even though we don't know the exact amount Michael was supposed to give Eskinaz, we do know the two did have a wager in place. After this situation happened, the NBA launched an investigation on Jordan's gambling. I'm not going to go into it because that's where the conspiracy theories of David Stern forcing Jordan to retire was born. Mike Korzemba and NBA Insider cover it well. If you guys want to check that conspiracy theory out, I'll link it down below. So we know Michael did gamble a lot and sometimes with the wrong figures and we can't cover all the stories because the tales are endless. But we do know he lost tons and tons of money. But did you know, he also ran an illegal gambling operation at his restaurant, 160 Blue. His love for gambling was so deep, he opened up his own bootleg casino. This was a story hid by the NBA, but it was confirmed by Jamal Crawford. So does Michael Jordan have a gambling problem? Eskina certainly thinks so. In your mind, does Michael Jordan have a serious gambling problem? In my mind, based on what I've seen, Michael Jordan has a serious problem. Eskina certainly thinks so, but I want you guys in the comments to tell me, based on the facts I provided, if Jordan has a gambling problem, or was he just a rich guy having some fun? Thanks for watching guys. Check out the other videos I released and don't forget to join us. This is Earn Your Ranks, where we only talk about ball. Signing off.